about them. Part of New Student Connections, PALS are a team of student leaders that are here to help you during your time at USF by giving you some individualized support and connecting you to resources on campus. Each week, these virtual chats will be hosted by two different PALS, so y'all will have a chance to connect with some of the great student leaders interested in helping you as new and current bulls. The first PAL joining us is Trevor, who is a third year student majoring in chemistry. Trevor is joined by Carlos, who is a second year student majoring in pre-nursing. Take it away, y'all. Like you said, my name is Trevor, and it's good to be here with y'all. I am a third year student majoring in chemistry, and I'm from Miami, Florida. Today, we'll be learning more about online learning one-on-one, -on -one, and that's including online formats and jargon, textbook and tools, how to set up your first two weeks for success. By the end of the session, you all have some great tools and information for online learning that you can hopefully apply to your own life and just thrive in future classes, especially in the fall semester. That's right, Trevor. I'm Carlos and I'm a second year student majoring in pre-nursing with a minor in public health. And I am also homegrown from Tampa, Florida. I don't know about y'all, but I'm excited to learn more about online learning 101. We have some folks here with us that are experts on campus when it comes to this topic, so please allow me to introduce Katie Sawyer, an assistant director, and Stryker Ebanks, a graduate assistant in the Academic Success Center. We'll be in great hands learning more from them. Hi everyone, my name is Katie Sawyer and I'm an assistant director for the Academic Success Center here in the Tutoring Hub. I, am, I have been at USF on and off since I started my undergraduate degree back in 2004. I'm excited to get all of you ready to get up to all your online coursework this fall. Hi everyone, uh, <laughs> as Katie said, my name is Stryker. My pronouns are he, him, his, and I'm a graduate assistant with Katie in the Academic Success Center. I'm currently pursuing a Master of Arts in Teaching for high school math education, and I'm super excited to talk with you today and help prepare you for success in the coming semester. All right, everyone, let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna be talking about the transition to online coursework. I know that it can be really overwhelming and we wanna break down some of the formats and the common terms that you're going to hear. Um, just so that you know what to expect, so that you know what you're looking for. Um, there are two main kinds of online course formats. There is synchronous and asynchronous. Um, synchronous means that you're gonna be required to meet in class at specific dedicated times each week or throughout the semester. Um, the time should be readily available for you to see on your OASIS schedule or in your course syllabus. Um, just like with your classroom courses, synchronous meetings will look different from class to class. Some professors might lecture or might have media um, engagement activities. Some might require group work. Each professor is going to be a little bit different um, and each course will have its own feel based on how they set up the synchronous meetings. Professors are also gonna be using different types of formats to hold synchronous sessions. I wanna take some time to go through the most popular platforms with you so that you can get an idea of what to expect. Teams is a platform that you're currently using for this event. Um, that one is very popular amongst professors. Blackboard Collaborate is an extension that's gonna live right within Canvas. It's very, very user-friendly, um, and it's something that you can access directly from any of the main navigation um, lists on your Canvas on that left-hand side. You can see a picture of that on the slide. Zoom has been one of the most popular options since campus went remote in spring. Um, this is also an app that we find most students are really comfortable with. Discord is another app that we've seen really gain popularity and could be used within your coursework. The most important thing here is to really familiarize yourself with the requirements for each of your classes, what applications they're going to use, and then go through the practice, really accessing each one of the different apps. One of the things we do like to give tips on is if you're running multiple apps that use a microphone and a camera, such as Teams and Zoom, sometimes they're not going to work because they'll be pulling them. So make sure that when you're using your applications, you have all of the other applications shut off. Next, we're gonna be talking about asynchronous. Asynchronous courses, there are no meetings required. The entire course is gonna be done online without any required course meetings. These courses have two main types of formats. They're gonna be self-paced or instructor-paced. Self-paced means that you can move through the coursework at your own pace. Um, and as you complete the sections, you can move right into the next section of content. Typically with self-paced, you can complete the course requirements early, which can be a benefit. However, there's always due dates or deadlines throughout the semester. The, the, I'm so sorry. 
right? There are no due, de due dates or deadlines throughout the semester. So it can make it a challenging situation if you push back all of that coursework until the end of the semester. Our suggestion for this type of course is to set aside specific days and specific times every single week, just like if you were going to a class to complete that work each week. This will make sure that you don't get behind and you don't end up with a whole bunch of work on one end. Instructor paced courses offer a little bit more structure in how students can go through the content. Each week you'll have due dates, um, specific setup and structure for how you can access and go through the content. This structure can help students that might procrastinate by having more structure kind of from week to week. But you can't usually complete all of the coursework early or at your own pace. Um, for this type of course, we do also suggest setting up the same day and time each week, just like you're going to a class. But what you're going to be doing that time is going to be a little bit more defined than if it was a self paced course. With both self or instructor paced course, it's important to know how to contact your professor. With face to face classes or synchronous meetings, there's a designated time that you have to talk to that professor. With asynchronous, you're not going to have that built in time, so you want to make sure that you set up the time to meet with your professor for a few times throughout the semester. With both synchronous and asynchronous courses, professors might also utilize applications as a part of your coursework. So a couple of those applications that are popular are going to be Flipgrid, which lets you post a video as a part of your discussion board or assignment. This app can be integrated directly into Canvas, um, so that you, that's what you're actually seeing as a part on the left hand side of the slide that you're seeing right now. Also Padlet, which provides professors, um, they can use that as an engagement activity to create interactive boards that you can use to share ideas. Again, the important piece here is you really just want to go through your syllabi in Canvas to see which apps you're going to be using and try to get comfortable with them as comfortable as you can be. For some of you, the time on campus, you might be a little bit more limited this semester. So we know that you might have some questions about how to access your materials for the courses, such as textbooks. The bookstore does recommend that you shop early and you shop online. In addition to shopping in person, you can either have your textbooks delivered to your homes or pick up just outside the bookstore. Pickup is set up online and it's completely contactless. You can use financial aid to purchase your textbooks and there's no penalty for exchanges, returns, should you need um, to change what your options were. The library also has resources that are going to be available for you. Um, they'll often have textbooks for students to use. These typically are going to be restricted for a time period. It can be anywhere from one to three hours, depending on the semester. What you can do is you can use this time to make copies of the chapters that you need and then return the books to the front desk. If you're waiting on financial aid, this is going to be a really great option to get you through those first couple of weeks until you're able to purchase those textbooks. We often get questions about electronic textbooks versus physical textbooks. And this is really up to the individual and kind of your specific preferences. I myself am a traditionalist. I like that with a physical copy, you can highlight, make notes, jot questions. Um, electronic options, they can be economical and they can be easy to access and carry. Um, my only tip is to make sure that with an electronic copy, you're taking the time to actively read the material. It can be easy to fall into a pattern where you're just searching through the words that you need rather than engaging in the text. Now I'm going to turn it over to Stryker to talk about setting yourself up for the next for the first two weeks. Thank you so much, Katie. So as Katie said, uh, we're going to talk now about how three things that you can do to help set yourself up for success during the first two weeks. So every course and every professor will be different, and that means you're going to want to take the time to familiarize yourself with all of your courses, the format of the courses and the expectations for the courses. Fortunately, there are a few things that you can and absolutely should look through to get to know these things. The first will be your course syllabi. There's an example of a syllabus on your screen on the right hand side. The syllabus is going to be the hub for the expectations in every course. Additionally, basically any information you could need to know will be in your syllabus. Also, we have Canvas pictures on your left hand side. So again, each professor might set up your Canvas page for your courses a little differently. So you really want to take the time to get familiar with navigating your Canvas pages and finding the modules and being able to find whatever information you need. Also, Katie touched on apps that you might need. You'll probably want to get comfortable with these apps and also practice using these apps and opening them before it comes time to use them. Finally, as Katie said, also you want to get comfortable with knowing how to communicate with your professor. 
In all of your syllabi, your professor should have their email included. There's an example up there. It'll be an at usf.edu. But some professors also like to be communicated with via Canvas messages, or they'll even provide their campus telephone number. Next. Thank you, Katie. So the second thing you can do is once you've gotten comfortable with your classes, you need to make a plan. So there are two types of plans that will be really useful to you in the semester. One will be a whole semester calendar that has all of your important due dates and all the important life events that you need to keep track of. And the other will be a weekly or daily schedule that just basically tells you what you're doing from day to day. We're going to talk about the weekly schedule first. So if you look on the left hand side, that's an example of a weekly schedule. To set that up, you want to sit down and just write down all of the times where you have to be in a class, at work, in the gym, in a club or organization, and just kind of write your obligations down for what a normal week looks like for you. Then you want to go in and start filling in times to do your studying and homework outside of class time, and you really want to work around those times that you've already blocked out. It's really important that you want to make a schedule that will be consistent and will stay the same from week to week. Uh, but, you know, in the first couple of weeks, it might change as you find that things aren't working for you, and that's perfectly fine. It's also really important to make sure to plan more time than you think you need for studying and homework and projects. It's really easy to shave down time that you've planned, but really hard to start adding extra time once you've started to really bulk out your, your schedule during the semester. Then we also have the whole semester plan. That one's just going to be really important for you to help you to help you keep track of your due dates and deadlines and stuff. Whether it's a physical one like you have there or an agenda or an app on your phone, it will just be super important. Um, while I highly, highly, highly suggest that right after this meeting, you go and write down every single due date that you have for this semester. Um, at the bare minimum, you really should take note of at least the first three weeks because the last thing you want to do is roll up on a Sunday night and then realize you have so many projects due this week. So that's what the whole semester plan will help you with. Next slide. Thank you. And the third thing you can do is really create a dedicated workspace for yourself. So the purpose of this workspace is to just help you get in the habit of help create the mental space that when I do work, I go to this space and when I'm in this space, I'm doing work. It doesn't really matter where your workspace is or what it looks like. It can be the corner of your room. It can be a part of the kitchen table you clear off. You can work on the patio. The important thing is that you have limited distractions. Distractions are at a minimum. You don't have people walking by and trying to talk to you. You don't have your phone going off. You don't have the TV playing and distracting you. You know, you really want to have your distractions limited. You also want to make sure you have reliable internet and technology. Now, not everyone has that, not everyone has the technology. Sometimes your technology breaks, sometimes internet goes down. Do not panic. We at USF have a lot of free resources for students, and that includes computer labs that you can use. Besides that, it doesn't really matter what your space looks like. You know, get creative, make it your space, as long as it's somewhere where you can focus and you can just really create that mindset of when I'm in this space, I do work, work gets done, I focus. Um, and finally, you know, be honest with yourself. If you pick a space and you've tried it for a couple days or a couple weeks and it's just not working for you, you know, maybe you need to change the setup, maybe you need to completely change the space, go ahead and do it. You know, that's, that's what all of this is about. That's what college is about, is kind of really learning what works for you. Great, thank you so much, Stryker. And thank you all for spending so much time with us this evening. Once this event wraps up, we will be sending some calendar templates for you to use, um, some that look very similar to the ones that Stryker was just showing. Those are for you to use, along with we'll also be sending some other resources and services that the ASC provides. Thank you all so much. All right, thank you so much, Katie and Stryker, for that wonderful presentation. You know, I'm a third year student, but we are all moving into this new environment together. This is definitely something that is not the optimal condition, especially for, I would say, freshmen going into college, because it's really tragic how you guys are not really getting the full college experience being in person with these classes. But nevertheless, we just got to keep pushing, keep moving, and try to be great. All right, but. We have some couple questions for you guys as an instructor and Katie. So first question of the night. I do not think I learned anything in person. My bad. I do not think I learned anything in online classes and I learned better in person. Shoot, me too. So on Striker or Katie, what can we, <laughs> is there anything we can do to sort of prepare for this?
That is a really great question. And I think that's a question that's on a lot of students' minds right now. And I think that the best thing that you can do to prepare is to just know as much as you can. Go through your courses, make sure that you're looking through and that you know what to expect. You don't want to have any surprises. Um, you want to make sure that you're going in and that you have as much information as you can. Um, it's very different. Um, it's a huge transition that a lot of students are making. And it's one of those things that you can still engage engage in the information and you can engage in the learning, it's just going to look a little bit different. So you have to figure out what works for you. Um, like Stryker was saying, with setting up that dedicated space, that will be another key piece. Really having that information, knowing where it is that you work, so that way you have that mindset when you sit down that you are going to be in a learning environment and you are going to be engaging in the information for the course um, and the content. And also utilize the resources. Um, you know, we are all there are a lot of students that are working online and there are a number of ways at USF that you can connect to those students and utilize those student networks to help you um, through this time. Other students in your class getting together for virtual study groups, um, utilizing a lot of those resources. Um, that way you are setting yourself up with that community of support that can help provide support as you're going through the semester when you run into any challenges. All right, and the next question we have is for Stryker, and it is, I am at home and I have two very young brothers. Do you have any tips on how I can set up a space in a crazy environment? Yes. <laughs> so back home where I live, I have a baby niece and a baby nephew, and they are the love of my life, and they are little tyrants at the same time. So something that you can really do to help set up a space is help get your whole family involved. You know, once you have a space that's set up, it is also equally as important to have a system where your family knows, hey, when I'm in this space at these certain times of the day, I'm busy. If you can do whatever you need to do to work around me or help keep my little ones out of the room, that would be great. If that's not something that really works for you, as much as I don't highly recommend being on campus, again, we, stu we do still have spaces open on campus for now on this during the semester where you can go to to get work done. Um, Again, I would definitely try to make it work at home first, but you know, those are those are options that we have available at USF. All right, Stryker, I got another question for you that I think a lot of people could relate to, especially me. I didn't study much in high school. Do you have any tips on how to study that would help? Yes. So I also didn't study much in high school and then I came to college and didn't study much at the beginning and that was a mistake. So the big thing is I, I believe people recommend that for every one credit hour that you have, you should set aside two hours of study time. Also, you have your syllabus will your syllabi will sometimes tell you, you know, you should be working this many hours outside of class time. OK, so that takes care of how much time you should be working in terms of how you study. Well, first of all, at the Academic Success Center, we have a great resource called Study Study Skills Mentors. And the Study Skills Mentors, their whole job is to just sit down with you like a tutoring appointment, but instead they work with you on specific issues that you normally have problems with. So maybe time management, procrastination, um, you know, not you feel like you're reading the textbook but not gaining anything. You know, we have those resources available to students for free. We also offer a class during the semester. I'm sure Katie can put more information in about this class if you are interested. But it's a six week class that you can take during the semester that it's basically like a study skills mentor appointment, but it's you know six weeks long once a week with the same students and it's much more in depth and much more rigorous. Um, otherwise, we also there are plenty of resources online that can help show you that, you know, maybe you've always tried to study this way using flashcards, but what works best for you might be mind maps or reading out loud or practicing with someone. Uh, so really, it's this is also a great time to just kind of explore different things. And also remember that just because something works for you in one classroom doesn't mean it works the same in a different subject. When I did my undergraduate in mathematics and Spanish, I studied two totally different ways for those classes. Um, but again, the ASC, the Academic Success Center, we do have the resources and tutors available to help you, to help guide you through learning what your process will look like. All right, so the next question up is for you, Caitlin, and it seems to be a very popular one. Um, it says, I am worried about not meeting anyone in my online classes. I am very worried about feeling alone. So is there a way to connect with other students in my classes? Yes, 
absolutely. This is another really common question that we're getting um, and for very good reason, right? It, again, it's a very different atmosphere that we are currently in um, and there are obstacles and challenges when it comes to connecting to our classmates. Um, one of the things that we're piloting in the Academic uh, Success Center this semester are virtual study groups. Now those are going to be for specific courses, but it's going to be Calculus 1, Calculus 2, Life Science Calculus 1, and General Chemistry 1 and 2. For those courses, you can go on to the ASC website. It will also be in the email that you're going to be receiving at the end of this, um, at the end of this um, workshop online. In that, you're going to be able to go on and sign up for those virtual study groups. You'll be paired with four other students that are going to be in that same course as you, and you'll also be paired with one of our ASC facilitators, and those are going to be tutors for those content areas currently. Those groups will meet every single week starting the third week of classes, and it'll be at the same day and same time. So it's a guaranteed group of individuals that are in, this, in the same course as you, um, working to solve content issues and concepts um, and going through that work. So that's a really great way. If you're in a course and the ASC isn't offering that virtual study group for that, and you want to create that virtual study group, please do so. Um, reach out to the other students that are in the course. And I know that can be, again, challenging, uh, but through group discussions, through other things, reach out to your professors as well um, and see what options might be available through the departments. There are resources. Um, the PALS are another great resource for you in connecting. Um, so reach out to your PALS as well, and they can get you connected to other students that are going to be in those same courses to make sure that you have that community of growth. Thank you, Katie. <laughs> um, one thing I definitely want to say is that the university does, at least for USF, it does an amazing job sort of giving support to all the students. Like, I never went to any tutoring sessions because I was always busy with work and doesn't really fit my schedule. But me and my friends have group sessions, and some of them actually go to tutoring. And then when we come back to study late at the library, they sort of just say, hey, I know how to do this. I'm going to put you guys on. And then, hey, um, at the end of the day, you're not alone in this class, so why not pass together with other people? But moving on to the next question for Stryker, does the ASC provide any services that can help with online learning? Great question. Yes, this actually leads right on from my last uh, my last statement, uh, which is oftentimes issues our students have with learning have to do with time management or procrastination, um, and also read, learning to read and study efficiently. So again, we have the study skills mentors. They have you know a whole certification process they go through, and their whole job is to help teach you or help work with you to help you understand you know what does your schedule look like now, what can it look like, what works best for you. And they also go over certain studying skills or certain ways of studying that might work best for you. You know, there are different methods you can use because personally for me, reading a physical book works much better than an e-text. But this semester, some of my books have to be on e-text because the physical ones are too expensive. You know, so learning how to manage these different materials differently is something that we can help with at the ASC. And again, the same thing with time management procrastination. That is entirely what our study skills mentors are for. I'm going to really have to do a big shout out for them because I think that they will be a, a great resource to all of the students this semester. <clears throat> thank you. Um, thank you, Katie, for the shout out. Us pals love that. And this uh, next question is for you. And it says, what is what happens if my Internet cuts out while I'm in the middle of a lecture? What should I do? I love this question because this happened to me this summer. Um, so it happens um, as an instructor, my internet went out, everything had to reboot. My suggestion is to have your cell phone readily available. If you have your cell phone and your cell phone is next to you, oftentimes you can connect much faster by using your phone um, back into that, that meeting until you can get your computer back up and running again. Um, also, if you know that there is an issue or maybe you know that your internet is going to go out, you can always utilize Campus as well. 
um, to go and utilize the resources there. They, we have computer labs that you are able to make reservations for. Um, so if you know that it's something that you need those resources, you absolutely can. But having that cell phone there, having that plan B is always an absolutely fantastic plan. Um, that way, if you do need to pop back in to make sure that you're not missing anything, you can do that. Also, you always want to let your professor know as soon as possible. If for some reason you were having technical issues, it's better to let them know as soon as possible um, rather than for them to assume that maybe you left class um, or any of those pieces. So just make sure that you're communicating with them throughout those technical issues. All right, thank you for that. All right, so now I am going to ask Rick a question for this. Amazon cannot be accessed from my region. How do I get my online textbooks at, at a cheap price? Yeah, that can definitely complicate um, you being able to get at least like the, the best deal potentially if, if that happens to be on Amazon. Um, I know as Katie mentioned earlier that the USF bookstore is, is offering delivery services. Um, to in order to get your textbooks um, and they're being pretty flexible with um, getting that out quickly and also doing exchanges and returns um, understanding that folks are in a very interesting situation this semester so that's definitely one option to look into and take advantage of but i definitely understand your concern for wanting to get the best price for your books depending on what is required for your classes, what you need to be successful. Um, so I think potentially exploring some other online resources um, that do service your area would, would probably behoove you in that uh, specific situation. Yeah, Rick, that was perfect. And I can add a little bit to this. Um, I just bought my textbooks right before we did event started and on uh, the, the bookstore website they offer like where you can use your financial aid a lot easier now I think it's called the BAP and like I can just use my extra financial aid that's not paying for my um, actual courses to pay for my textbook and that's a that definitely helps so yeah like not having to do that and then my next question here is for Katie and it is Someone said that something about a certain number of study of hours we should be studying for each class. Can you talk about that again? And what does that look like for a hybrid classes? That is another really good question. And honestly, it's one that's really difficult to answer. Um, I really have a hard time saying there's a specific number of hours that you should be studying for a specific course because every student is so incredibly different. Um, and really, it depends on what your studying looks like, how efficient you are at studying, and how comfortable you are with the content. Um, I know for me specifically, if I'm sitting down for a math or science course, it's going to take me a little bit longer. I know that I am going to have to book in a little bit more time than I would for a writing course um, or for a social studies course. So really it's going to be individualized to you. My suggestion to start as you're going through your courses is to really try to figure out blocks. So just like you're in a course, if your course does not have dedicated meeting times, I would say that you want to still spend about the same amount of time. So I would say about two hours for that course just to be going through that information. Then you also also want to tack on time to make sure that you're studying that content and you're really understanding the concepts. This is where it's going to get a little bit more individualized and in how comfortable you are with that content. Um, I would say give yourself a lot more time at the beginning, maybe the first three weeks to see exactly what it is that you need. On top of that time, you want to make sure that you're also booking in time for studying and not studying for completing your assignments. So if you know that you have a large paper coming up, you want to make sure that you're blocking out time in your week to complete that paper and all of the different steps for that paper. So it's not just a question of how many hours that you should be studying a week, but really what that time looks like. This is where the study 
study skills mentors that Stryker was talking about can really help work with you um, in your first couple of weeks to really determine what that looks like for you as a student with your different courses. At first, it's going to be trial and error. And every semester, it's going to take a couple of weeks to figure out exactly what your best pattern is going to be. But what I like I said, the best thing to do is to plan more time on the front end, figure out if it's what you need, and you can always take time off later on um, as you move forward within the weeks. All right, really thank you for that, Katie. And Katie had a lot of good points in that. Um, I could definitely relate as a student, whereas like you really need to sort of find your own way to see what method works for you the best. Mm, internet sort of cut out a little. Sorry about that. Yeah, so you really need to find a way what as a student what really works for you the best, especially since you know some of us coming from high school, we never really had to study before. So coming in, actually trying to find your way, it takes some time. I believe it took me up until my second year to sort of figure out like what really works for me the best. So as Katie said, it's really trial and error, and you know you just gotta keep working till you get it right. All right. The next question is for Stryker. I heard that you have to reserve spots to study in the library. Now, is that true? So yeah, great question. Um, as I'm sure many of you know, many things are changing on campus this semester because we at USF are trying our absolute best to help keep our whole community really safe and healthy. And one of the changes will be that there is limited seating in the library and also you have to reserve a spot before you'll be allowed into the library. This is really to help limit, you know, how many people are coming through the doors and how many people are walking around the library. It's a super easy process. and I be believe the link is already up. You just go to the USF library website and hit like reserve a seat or something and it comes up with this whole list of you know all the seats available and you just pick one and the time that you want to be there if you've ever reserved a study room in the library before it's the same exact process also for anyone who's in a smart lab course this semester and you're familiar with smart lab with what smart lab normally looks like you also have to reserve a seat for our smart lab this semester as well because again it's part of the library and we're still doing the same process of seat reservations All right, the next question we have is also for Stryker, and it says the virtual study group for Calc 1, is it for engineering Calc 1 or the other one? Thank you. Unfortunately, uh, this semester, no. The only five classes that we're piloting it for are the normal Calc 1, normal Calc 2, life science Calc 1, and then Gen Chem 1 and 2. Um, however, if you are interested in doing a study group, that you know, just because we don't facilitate it doesn't mean it's not available to you, right? You can still hook up with people from your class. You can still you know, slide into their Canvas DMs and be like, hey, was anyone interested in forming a study group? And you can meet with people via Zoom, via Microsoft Teams. You, know, you don't really need us to facilitate it. Um, if you would like a tutor for your subject, the ASC is still offering one-on-one -on -one tutoring for engineering calculus this semester. So that is still something that can be done. All right, cool. So the next question is for Katie. How do I get this financial aid for books? That is a really great question. Um, with financial aid, it's one of those things that um, I don't necessarily want to speak to because there are so many things that move and change all of the time. Um, and the best people to talk to would be financial aid themselves. There's so many different packages, scholarships, funds, all things that you really want to talk to a financial aid person specifically because it changes. Um, and so that's one of those things that I don't want to misspeak here and I don't want to say something that's no longer accurate. Um, so what I would suggest is just reaching out to financial aid and your financial aid advisor and finding out what options it is that you have. There are options out there for you, um, but figuring out exactly what those would be moving forward. Thank you, Katie. That was a great point. Just a quick addition to make um, on no. Um, you can't get specific financial aid for, for textbooks. If you qualified for the program that Trevor mentioned before, it's BAPP, B-A-P-P, -P, or Bookstore Advanced Purchase Program, you would have already gotten an email saying, great, your financial aid package makes sure that you qualify for this. So if you've already gotten that email, then you qualify for it. 
um, and you can use it at the USF bookstore by August 26th. If you did not get an email saying you qualify for that, then your specific financial aid situation does not qualify you, qualify you for that, excuse me. Thank you for that clarification, Rick. Um, and the next question is also for Katie, and it is, even though I have an, it's an assigned advisor, can I ask other similar advisors to look into my courses? Different departments look different. Um, some departments have one advisor for the entire department, um, and some departments have 12 advisors. It really honestly depends. Um, and for some, it's one of those things that it, it depends on who is available and when they're available. Oftentimes during the very busy times of the semester, like drop ad week is going to be. Um, sometimes the advisor that you're normally working with is going to be completely full or booked with appointments and you're not going to be able to utilize them. My suggestion, however, um, I was an advisor for a long, long time. And one of the things that I really enjoyed was seeing my students over and over again because I can make a relationship with them. I can get to know them and their classes um, and really help build them exactly the program that they want here at USF. So my suggestion is always to start to build Build that relationship and build it early. And if you've started building a relationship with an advisor, I would say try to stick with them as much as you possibly can. However, sometimes depending on the department, there are other options where you might be able to see a different advisor. It just depends on what the department is and what's available. All right, perfect. So next question is, can you please repeat what someone should do if someone is disconnected from the internet? I believe, Katie, this is for you. You touched base on it a little before, so you could just retouch on what you said. Yes, because this did, this happened to me. Um, I was teaching a class and my internet went out and I was frantically trying to figure out what to do because I had 24 students in my class that I'm sure we're all going, what just happened? Um, so for me, I say two things. One, have a plan B readily available to you. A cell phone is a really great one. That way you can just pop back into that team's meeting. Um, typically your phone is gonna be a much easier way than waiting for the internet to re-come up. For me, it took about 15 minutes for my internet and my computer to reboot together to access the Teams meeting, but I was able to reconnect through Teams on my phone until I was able to get my computer going. The second thing is that if you know that you might have some issues with internet, if you know that your internet is not necessarily reliable or where you are is not going to be, you can always utilize the resources at USF as well. Um, USF does have computer labs that you are able to make reservations for, um, so utilize those resources as much as possible. Um, okay, so either Stryker or Caitlin, whoever prefers to answer this question, it is how can I meet with a study, study skill mentor and what do we talk about with them? Yay, I love these questions. So um, again, because things are looking a little differently this semester, if you want a tutoring appointment, you'll just go through our Academic Success Center website and click the big, big button that says book an appointment. Um, and one of the options there will be study skills mentor. So what do you talk with them about? Study skills mentors, again, are kind of trained to help you understand what it is the issue is that you're dealing with, because a lot of times our students, I used to be a study skills mentor, right? A lot of the times the students, you don't exactly know what the issue is, they just know it's not working, right? I read the book, it doesn't go in. I feel like I'm behind on classes. I don't know what I'm doing, help. That's perfectly fine. The mentor will help talk you through, you know, what are the normal issues that you face? What does your study habits normally look like? How do you read your textbook normally? And they have a list of resources and different ways and different like plans that they can use. And they will whip one out and be like, well, let's take a look at this. You know, let's see if you try it this way. Um, there's a specific reading method called Parrot. I won't go into it, but I learned about it to become a study skills mentor. And that was like three years ago. And to this day, I still use that method for reading because that's what works for me. Um, yeah, so that that is that's how you get to me with the study skills mentor and they will take care of the rest. You don't need to know what the issue is, just you know, take the leap of booking the appointment and we, you know, we will just walk you from there. All right. So we have another question that just popped into the chat. With so many classes, homework and assignments, will there still be spare time to join an organization? This is either for Katie, Stryker, whoever wants to pick it. 
I get. I think I'm on the screen, so I'll just I'll go ahead with it. <laughs> um, yes, I would say absolutely. Um, for a normal semester, you know, this is what college is about. You know, college is really built so that you, you know, you have this really rigorous education. You know, you get to learn all this good, fun stuff, but you also have time to be part of the community, to join an organization, to do something fun, to do some, you know, extracurricular activities. Um, if you know you personally, if you don't feel like you can fit it into your schedule, you don't have to, you know. But if you really feel like it's something that you really want to do go ahead and do it. And if you need help figuring out what that looks like for you, if you need help planning out, well, how can I do an organization on my schoolwork? Study Skills Mentors, the Academic Success Center, I believe maybe also Wellness Coaching. You know, we have those resources here at USF to help you plan those out so that you can partake in all these organizations and, you know, do what it is you want to do while still being super successful here at USF. Um, I could add on to that just a little bit. Stryker really made a fair point where he said, if you really want to do it, then go ahead. Because for me, I am a part of an organization where I just became vice president and I have taken biochemistry, physical, yeah, physics too, and some of these other hard classes, especially science. Too. But one thing for sure is that also it definitely really relies on your mindset. You're definitely going to have less free time to sort of do what you want. But at the same time, you're going to do what you actually want to do and actually be engaged with your organization, club, wherever the case may be, and sort of just um, still while still focusing on school. So I'll say the only downside is that you're going to sort of be booked. But you know, that's the life of a student. We can't really avoid that. And we sort of just had to roll with the punches and keep moving forward. Because at the end of the day, you know, we're trying to be great. <laughs> and um, we sort of have to do what we can to just grow. So if you see yourself that, hey, you know, is this something that you really ask your question, just like how Stryker said, is this something you really want to do? If so, then, you know, don't half step, take that full step forward and just do what you have to do. Take care of business at the same time, excel in your academics. Mm -hmm. But it looks like another question dropped in. What is the difference between an honors advisor and an academic advisor? I can take this one. So when it comes to your academic advisor versus your honors advisor, your academic advisor is going to be the individual that is going to be getting you from in your coursework, in your department, in your major, going to be getting you from your first year all the way through graduation. So they're going to be the ones that are going to be working with you on your coursework. They're going to be the ones that are going to be figuring out exactly what those prerequisites are and how you're going to move through the coursework to get the degree that you're trying to get. Your honors advisor is going to be a little bit different. Your honors advisor is going to be working with you on the honors curriculum. Um, also, that's going to go through graduation, but it's going to be a specific curriculum that's going to be alongside the coursework of your major. So that's what your honors advisor is going to work with you on. Your honors advisor and your academic advisor will both work with you on how to also infuse some of those outside activities, um, those experiential pieces that you're also going to want to be able to be um, competitive in whatever field it is that you're going into afterwards. So there will be a little bit of overlap in that area, but when it comes to coursework, your major coursework, that's going to be specific for your academic advisor and your honors coursework is going to be with your honors advisor. All right, perfect. Thank you for that explanation. I believe that really cleared things out. Next question. Can you please tell us the difference between engineering calculus one and normal calculus one? That indeed could be confusing. So I also used to be a calculus tutor at the Academic Success Center. <laughs> um, yeah, so they really cover the same exact material, engineering calc, life science calc, and normal calc. The biggest differences are going to be the types of questions you see and the vocabulary they use. So engineering calculus will really prepare you for the type of questions you'll see as you go deeper into an engineering degree or an engineering path, whereas normal calculus will use kind of the more generic, possibly absurd phrased questions. Um, if you need a calculus to fulfill like one of your FKL requirements or something, normally either of those should do. Um, but just if you plan on doing engineering and you kind of want to get a jump start and seeing what those types of questions will be looking like and the type of vocabulary that you want to be exposed to, I would go ahead and do engineering calc. All right, 
Okay. Another question dropped in. Can you repeat how to access the group study programs for calculus students and science majors? Yes. Yes, we absolutely can. So after this event wraps up, um, once we get the attendance list from the link that you clicked on earlier, um, we're going to be able to send out all of those resources directly. So we'll be able to have, a, you'll, be, you'll have access to a direct link in that email. You also can access it through our ASC website. Um, if you just go to Google and type in USF ASC, you'll be able to see it right there. Um, and we'll also be able to access the virtual study groups through there. All you're going to have to do is go on. There's going to be an electronic form that you're going to complete. If you already know that you have individuals in your classes that you'd like to be paired with, you can also add them on your form. Um, so please feel free to do that. If you know there's one other student that you've already connected with, you can absolutely add them. All right, looks like we're running just a little bit dry on questions. So Katie and Stryker, if you guys have any final points, you could go ahead and, you know, <laughs> bestow your knowledge. Katie, it looks like you're muted. Goodness gracious, that's the second time tonight. You'd think I'd be a professional at this by now. Um, all right, ladies and gentlemen, I think the first and foremost thing for me is to not be overwhelmed, to take a deep breath. Um, everyone is in this together. All of your classmates are in this with you. All of us are in this with you. There are lots of resources at USF that you to engage in, um, and we do want you to engage. I think that question about student organizations is such an important one um, because college is, is there's lots of different components and we want you to engage in all of those components um, with your online classes specifically take it slow start this first week just try to get as much information go through in detail start to organize your thoughts and organize what your plan is having a plan is really going to help you that way you can determine what works and what doesn't work as you move forward and utilize those resources if something's giving you a challenge if you're getting frustrated that's a good way to know it's time to change something up reach out to the ASC study skills mentors, virtual study groups, um, or try something different. Reach out to the PALS, other resources that we have, and try to figure out something that does work. And we are here to help in any way that we can. I also have some advice. <laughs> yeah, so um, I think a lot of good things have been said and there's not much more to say, except, you know, as a, I, I absolutely, absolutely, highly recommend that you make sure to meet with your professors in their office hours, be them virtual or not. Every professor you have for your whole degree. That is a lesson that a lot of us learn too late in life. Um, and I know that I believe they still push, uh, what is it, networking, they push networking and orientation stuff. It is so useful. You know, your professors, they really know what they're doing. If you're struggling with something in the course, they can really help you out. But also, especially if it's a class that's related to your major or related to the field that you want to go into, they have those connections. You know, they know how to get you into the field. They know the open positions. They know the types of experiences that will really help you in the future. So please, 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 even if you don't physically see your professors this semester, or even if you have those asynchronous classes where you don't have that meeting time, as Katie touched on like earlier in this, make the time to meet with your professors at least a few times a semester. You know, create those relationships because they will be invaluable to you as you go forward. That is my advice to everybody at USF. All right, so right before you guys end the presentation, one more question just slide in. So they said I am on the ASC website, but I can't exactly find where to join the study communities. So if you load up the page, I'm not sure if someone can share this on the screen, but if you load it up the page, there should be a big thing there that says book an appointment and right on the edge, there's a little arrow because it's a sliding screen. You click on the arrow and the next page says join a virtual study group and that'll be the one that you click on. Um, also, I believe you can go into our tutored courses thing and there should be a banner there that you can click. Ah, there we go. Thank you. Thanks. Right. So yes, yeah, so you just click on the little arrow there and the next one will be virtual study groups and you just click that and that'll take you to the form that you fill out to get to that study group. Great question. Thank you. 
Those were some great questions, everyone. I hope this time was helpful for you all to learn more about a few tips and tricks from our folks from the Academic Success Center with regard to online learning. And hopefully you're feeling a little bit more prepared and a little bit more confident um, in your ability to get started tomorrow. Um, thank you again to our pals, as well as to Katie and Stryker from the Academic Success Center for helping us learn more. Um, to connect with the Academic Success Center, their email is currently displayed on your screen, asctampa at usf.edu. And just an additional reminder that if you haven't already to go ahead and click the attendance link and we'll go ahead and drop it in one last time into the announcements um, because that is how we will get together your email address so that we can send you um, that, those follow-up resources that Katie and Stryker mentioned earlier. We hope to see you all at our next How to College chat this um, upcoming Monday, tomorrow, August 24th at 8 p.m where we'll be learning more about funding your college experience and all things finances. So if that's of interest to you, go ahead and join us tomorrow. And to stay connected with us as New Student Connections, you can go ahead and follow us on Instagram at USF underscore NSC or email us at newstudent at usf.edu, both of which are currently displayed on your screen. Additionally, starting at uh, 6 p.m. here, we will be kicking off WOW. Um, so if you are interested in joining us for the virtual celebration in just a few short moments, you can go ahead and go to usf.edu slash WOW um, to go ahead and get some more information about how to join that. For more information about these virtual chats and some other great opportunities for all Bulls this fall, definitely be sure to download the Go Bulls Guide app where you'll be able to access the USF Student and Family Guide which has a, a nice collection of resources, information, and a schedule of events for you to check out. And if um, apps on your phone aren't your speed, there is also a URL currently displayed on your screen so you can open it up in a browser. Thank you again for joining us to learn more about how to college and as always, go Bulls!